Good morning, everyone. So welcome to this talk on getting your app on Android TV. My name is Xavier. I'm software engineer working for Intel in Paris, and I'm also Google developer expert for Android. Um, all the social stuff is at the bottom of the slide if you're interested in that stuff. And let's get started. So I'll talk about what is Android TV. I'll do some demo. I'll take a video because I didn't really break it into the project part today. Um, I'll talk about how you can make your application or your game compatible with Android TV. So we we'll start from existing examples. Or you can go further and integrate it more with the system because there are many things on Android TV that are quite specific to TVs. And how you can publish your application. Because once again, there are some specific steps. And we we'll go for question and answer. So Android TV, uh, first of all, it's Android. So that's kind of obvious, but if you remember 2011, there was already something with Google and TVs, and it was named Google TVs. They were based on Android, they were running on x86 platforms, but we can't really say they were Android, because um, you didn't have re real access to the Play Store, and uh, the system wasn't that good. So, at last Google I, you Google launch this time Android TV and it's real Android. And it's also Chromecast, so if you plug an Android TV device or if you get an Android TV device, you can also use it exactly like a Chromecast and cast content to it. But it's also more than Chromecast since it supports applications, so streaming applications or any other kind of applications like karaoke, and it supports if your um, games. So you can have casual games like Batman, but also heavier games like Dead Trigger or many other titles. Since it's Android, and we are Android this time, it's more compliant with AOSP. So you directly add Android TV targets from AOSP. Where is the Nexus player, you can recompile AOSP image for it. And there is still a part that is uh, not open source. These are the Limpack launcher. That is the main launcher of the device. And of course, Google Apps and Play Store. So all these are coming from, from the Google Play services. So Nexus Player, uh, it's uh, right here. That's a small uh, device. That's the first Nexus device for Android TV. It's powered by Intel uh, quad core CPU, 64 bits, and Core VR GPU. The same one you can find in iPhone 5S, I believe. It supports uh, OpenGL S3.1, that's with AC, and no Ethernet, which can still use USB OTG if, uh, if you really have a Wi Fi that sucks at home. Sometimes that happens. And it's only $99, and you can buy also external controllers, but any Bluetooth HID controllers will still work. Easy. So you can find cheaper ones. <coughs> but Android TV is also an ecosystem, so many vendors are already um, coming with their own devices. So in France, we have one uh, provider who started the Freebox Mini 4K, so the first 4K Android TV device. Uh, NVIDIA announced its Shield device. Razer, more into gaming, announced the Forge, that should be available soon. And also TV manufacturers are getting into the game. So Sony, Philips, Sharp, and others <coughs> are integrating in the TV. In many devices. Hope it's better. So the demo obviously it will not come from here, but luckily I've recorded a video. <laughs> so here is the main lean back launcher with all the icons from all the apps and games. You can see two rows with one with apps, one with games. Here is the Play Store. So on Play Store right now you only have uh, on the main screen you only have Sorry what? You only have featured applications for various categories. Now, if you look for uh, specific games or RPGs, you also and you you get a search feature in the store, and you can find other applications that have been approved for inclusion on the Play Store. And here it is one uh, the simple application from Google. So it's using um, the Leanback support library. 
with many elements that are already tuned for TV. On the first row, you've got recommendations. So recommendations are content that are pushed by applications that are on the device. It's kind of notifications, actually they are, we'll see it later. And so you can see all the different types of uh, applications you can already find on the store. So from Go Simulator to Badlands and uh, Music Smash. So we've got the Play Store. <coughs> You can install uh, many applications, not only applications that have been approved for diffusion to a Play Store, if you go on the web version of a Play Store. Any compatible app can be installed, so even if Chrome hasn't been approved for distribution on Android TV devices, you can go on the web version of a Play Store and remotely install Chrome, for example. But uh, if you do that with applications that are just compatible and not approved for distribution on Android TV, Sometimes you will not get an icon on the uh, on this launcher because this is a specific launcher that uh, asks for lean back um, intents, which is also later what it means really. So to get you up onto this interface, it's not very complicated. Uh, I would define this as four basic steps. So first of all, you need to either add or reuse an activity you will want to be used uh, on Android TV from the launcher. So you define this activity as a receiver for the uh, main intent from with a lean back category. So lean back is the name of the launcher and the name of everything specific to Android TV interfaces. Then you need to integrate TV specific assets because if you remember the previous demo. On the launcher, you've got icons that are um, rectangles, icons, so it's not very common on Android uh, devices. But of course, it's an asset you need to uh, integrate with your app. And then, of course, on a TV, uh, and it wouldn't make sense to have it, but you don't have touchscreen. So you need to adapt your app so you can, be, uh, you can na navigate on this app using a simple D-pad reload. So we've only up, down, left, right, center. And then sometimes you also need to uh, do a little bit more work to adapt the user experience of your application. So if it's a game, uh, there is usually not much to do. If it's uh, normal applications, usually you have to re-implement total new activities to uh, give users access to the content. But although when you do that, in fact, there is no need to create a separate application or a separate APK. You can do all of this from an existing application. But if you, if you need to, it's also still possible to provide an alternative APK for TV, for the same application on the store, of course. So you wish are also good reviews. So the first step, lean back intent, so from your manifest, you can define it, so it's uh, the main intent with the lean back launcher category. So you can even set this category to your uh, main activity already, or define a new activity, it's up to you. For the banner, so it's a banner, so you have to also add it. You can add it either from your activity tag or the application tag, so it doesn't really matter. But you can also provide more than one launcher from the more than one activity to the launcher, and it makes sense to put it into the activity. So there are some rules uh, for this banner. One of these is you need to include the name of your application, because not like on Android, um, there are no names of applications that are put by the system on these banners, so you have to include it. You can't use transparency. I mean, you can, but you don't have the right to. Uh, if you do so, you have a really bad color set in the background anyway. So you you, it's advised to use your own. And on the size, it's 320 pixels by 180 pixels. You can put it in a global XHDVI. For so the support non touching inputs, um, if you're using standard Android uh, views, elements, and so on, they usually already support uh, non-touching input, so this view supports it. 
Uh, but by default, when targeting the latest version of Android, your application is defined as non-supporting social inputs because usually it doesn't work out of the box. So first of all, you need to define that you actually support non-touching devices by using the user special tag inside your manifest. So you set it uh, required uh, property defaults. And then uh, you have to refer what you say you are supporting. So try your app using a D-pad. Uh, you can use the emulator if you don't have any Android TV device. But that's really important to try yourself because even if uh, the majority of Android elements are actually supporting non-touching uh, inputs, so D-pad input, sometimes you'll see the focus isn't on the right element, and you wouldn't want it to be there, uh, and so on. So you can adjust all the D-pad navigation from uh, XML already using the Android next focus down, up, next focus left, right, to tell the system which element should be focused next when the user press left, uh, right, down, or up. So this is really important. And of course, we can uh, adjust which element should get the focus first using request focus, either from Java or XML. And if you get your custom views and link uh, all the inputs by itself, you need to monitor the key code d-pad uh, key events. And then adapting in the UX is uh, honestly a bigger topic, but just one slide, but uh, to start with, you need to use a thing that has no toolbar, uh, because that's awful on TV. You don't really want to have to reach a toolbar. And anyway, in uh, Android 5.1, they just, if you're using a toolbar, all the actions are just removed from it, so you can't even rely on it now. So use a theme that inherits from, um, from no title bar or from theme dot lean back. So theme dot lean back comes from the lean back support library. So uh, if you use the lean back support library, uh, you need to target at least uh, minimum SDK uh, 17. But if you use it only from the TV part, it's still safe to use it from an application that has lower minimum SDK targets. And you can uh, force its use using uses SDK to override library and <coughs> to keep your own uh, minimum SDK version. But if you do that, just pay attention not to use the Linux support library for any other elements, but the ones that are inside, used inside the TV part of your app. When you uh, design your UX, you need to think about uh, a common issue on TVs that's called overscan. So that means that on some TVs, um, the TV may display only uh, the center part of your applications so with uh, uh, big crops. So you need to pay attention not to put um, elements that are mandatory to be seen or used in these area on the side of the screens. Like uh, if you're doing a game, you don't want to put the nitro, the boost, all the, all the things uh, too close to the to the edges of the screen. So you should start with setting a margin, so uh, 27 dp on uh, top and bottom, and 48 dp on left and right. So these were really four uh, quite basic steps. I mean, from any application, if they are not too device specific, it shouldn't take really long, and half a day, and you should have already a good experience, and you're ready to be published on the Android TV store. But as so before, there, were, there are many things that are specific to Android TV, like uh, the recommendation row. Um, there is also voice search activated uh, on TV. And there is also TV input framework I haven't talked about yet, but I'll do in some slides. So you can go further. So using the Linback support library, so it's providing a theme, but it's also providing many of the elements uh, and views that are already tuned for TV. If you're interested about using it, uh, you'll have to wait for our next talk by Sebastiano, who will go really deeper than me on this topic. Then for the recommendation system, so I've said earlier it's kind of 
notifications and from applications. And in fact, on the implementation, these are notifications. That's as simple as that. So if you want to push content on to the recommendation row, you just create a new notification and you can adjust everything from the background color to the image. And also, it was maybe not obvious during the video, but when uh, the user is focusing one of the items from the recommendation row, all the background from the Android TV interface can change to whatever you want. So you set this parameter from the uh, extra background image URI. <coughs> so the time when you should fire uh, these notifications uh, is not a lot documented but it's advised to use it um, to publish notifications aft shortly after boot, like 30 seconds after boot. So you, you can do this using the alarm manager. That requires a new permission. So on Android TV, you have uh, global search. So all the Android TV remotes, usually they have a little button with a mic and there is a mic on top of this button so you can talk to your remote. Yeah, the first time you do this, uh, you can look weird at home. <laughs> but uh, it's working really well. It's using uh, the Google Play voice recognition systems. It's like OK Google. And to integrate with this global search feature, that's quite simple. You need to have uh, a content provider for search and declare uh, that you can provide it to the system using the android.app.searchable metadata. So um, that's quite boring with a lot of XML. So if you're interested into that, you can go to the documentation. It's nothing very specific. But once you uh, have integrated your app with the system, you can also provide, uh, you also have to provide a specific activity to display the results. And from this activity, you should be also able to search for more. So it's the internal search part of your application. And to do that, you can use the speech recognizer directly. So if you use a speech recognizer, it will directly work with the remote or with uh, anything. By the way, there is a mic into this remote, but the system itself has no microphone. So if you're looking for a microphone on Android TV, uh, on at least on the Nexus player, you will get no microphone. So it's kind of weird to read the API knowing that you can use speech recognition, but you don't have any microphone. So that means you still need to have the record audio permission, but there is no audio device to use. You just need to use the speech recognizer uh, from the Android API, and it will work. And for the search activity, there is uh, inside the lean back support library I've described earlier, there is a search fragment already providing uh, many elements you can use for your search results. Now the TV input framework. So this is one of the, I think, most interesting feature of uh, Android TV. It's the integration with channels and programs. Um, so everything goes through the TV input framework, that is the device feature. Uh, all the Android TV devices got it. And it comes through the live channels application on the device. So it's, uh, you can see the screenshots here from the Play Store with uh, upgrades to the application. There is even picture in picture mode that is not out yet actually. And let's do a demo. So here's the live channels app. So here's a screenshot. And here is a video. So the live channels app, and uh, here it's on a Nexus player, so you can only have software channels, but on the TV you would have channels from TNT, from anything you want. And applications can, uh, using the TV input framework, provide programs and channels directly to the system. And the live channel application will be able to, show to provide it to the users. So it's like with a normal TV, you just take your remote and you go through all your channels. And some of these channels can be provided, provided by software. Like this is a sample I made, just write it works on the surface, but you can do it. And that's quite fun from an application to be able to create your own uh, software channel. 
that yield back. So <coughs> a software channel can write anything in the surface. There is a program guide, so you can publish all the information about your program channels with a channel display name. You can invent everything. It has also got support for captions, uh, various audio sources, and then the user can customize which channel he wants to have in his live channel apps. So from your application, you will also provide um, a setup activity to set up new channels, and a settings activity so the user can act on it if there, are, if there is something to customize for the user. And then from the live channel app, the user can choose uh, which channel he wants to be in all the channels from the application. Oh. And from the live channel app, it's quite powerful. You can uh, push all your programs to the TV input framework with also um, categories and so on. And when you look at the program um, grid, you can filter on these uh, categories. So I can't wait my TV to be able to do that with all the TNT channels and so on. So to declare a live channel and implement it from your application, what you do is to um, provide a TV input service that will instantiate a TV input service session. So all your uh, drawing, dec video decoding part will be done from the TV input service session. Uh, you'll see the implementation on the next slide. Right now it's uh, the declaration page, so to integrate the system. So from your manifest, you um, declare this service you just implemented, so the my TV input service. It needs the bind TV input permission, and it needs to receive also the android.media.tv.tv input service. And there is also a line for metadata, where you will declare uh, the two activities that are required for the channel service. So in here it's in my TV input, so you declare the settings activity and the setup activity. And on the session, what you get is actually a surface. And you can you will receive um, the callbacks on tune with a channel ID in the channel URI ending with uh, a system handle ID. And and you can so uh, start drawing onto your surface and notify the system that uh, it's okay, you can go ahead. So with notify video, uh, no, you return true. And before you can also notify for errors using notify video and available and giving the reason for this. So when you instantiate it, you can start by displaying it's unavailable because you're buffering. It's quite common for a software channel. And then that's it. And you can also have all over callbacks, so to uh, modify captions, the audio source, and so on. So you, you can draw pretty much everything. Um, you can't receive directly uh, inputs from users, like D-pad up, down, and so on. You, can't, you wouldn't really implement a game using live channels. I mean, some people would maybe want that, but no. You can do that only if you have a system of signature permission, so it's not from user land applications. To push your um, channels and programs, what you have, uh, you have access to uh, the um, so through the TV contract, you have access to con to uh, the content provider that keeps all the channels and programs. So here are all the information you can push for channels: so display name, a logo, the format of your streams, and so on. And for the programs, that's the same. <coughs> so you can push for each, uh, it even handles the uh, various numbers for episodes, seasons, and so on. So one thing is when you use uh, the internal content provider, the only f data you've got access to are the programs and channels that are attached to your package name. So if you want to uh, implement a new TV program application, it's actually not possible uh, with um, user permissions. So every request, every query you are doing on this database 
they are filtered on your package name. So now you've got everything integrated, it's time to ship. <coughs> so it's again four steps. You need to adjust uh, feature requirements to, be to ensure that your app is compatible with Android TV devices. Of course, upload your additional or updated APK, upload various assets, and opt in for TV distribution. Like for Android Wear, you need to opt in if you want to be displayed on the Android store on the device. So first, on adjusting all the metadata and so on. So if your app is a game, you have to set the property is game to true inside your application tag. Um, you need to do that to appear also in the right row on the Android TV launcher. So remember you have a row with all, with all the applications and uh, another row with all the games. So if you want to appear in the right row, you need to set this property. On the store, when you browse it, you can see if, ga if applications are require requiring a gamepad or not. So it's also a good idea to tell the users directly if it's uh, required or not for the android.hardware gamepad feature. And if you want your APK to be available only on Android TV, you can ask for a feature android.software.leanback. So that's through this feature that you can have an APK that will be able to be installed only on Android TV devices. So that, that's the important one uh, if you want to have, for example, one APK for tablets and phones and another APK for Android TV, TV devices for your one and only application on the store. And of course, there are features that aren't available on Android TV, like sensors, honestly who would use sensors on Android TV. Um, NFC isn't available on all the devices. You don't have a touch screen, you don't have a microphone, you don't have all the telephony stuff, you don't have camera. So all these features, you shouldn't require them, else uh, your app will simply not be available to Android TV devices from the Play Store. And there is a trap, uh, <coughs> because some permissions on Android, they are implicitly leading to the requirement of hardware features. So if you're uh, requiring, for example, the permission for access fine location, that means your application needs to uh, uh, work on devices with android.hardware.location.gps feature. So that's the kind of thing that can prevent your app from being distributed on Android TV. So you need to take care about that and if, there are such, if you are using such permissions, you need to explicitly declare that these are not required. So once you have adjusted all this, you can upload your APK on the store. So you also need to upload uh, the banner and the screenshot for TV, and then opt in for distribution, so the right side. And if you're lucky, your application will be approved. If it's not approved at the first time because that's their fault or because that's your fault, no worries. Uh, it's just not a one shot. Um, there are some emails that may lead you to think that you've got only one chance to be distributed on Android TV and if you blow it up, it's dead. Uh, that's not the case. Even if you refused, um, all the next upgrades, next, next uploads you do with your APK, they will be reconsidered for Android TV distribution. And finally, you may be approved. So if you want to have your APK, uh, if you want to have a different APK for Android TV devices than the one you're distributing for uh, tablets and smartphones, it's all supported from the Play Store. So you remember the uh, features, so android.software.leanback, you need to require it from the APK you will distribute for Android TV devices. And from the Play Store, you just need to switch to advanced mode. I know that's not obvious, but that's what you need to do. And then upload uh, the new APK that has got the uh, android.software.leanback feature requirement and a different version code than the, the other APK you're distributing for tablets and devices and other devices. Once you've done that, you'll see on the Play Store console all the different versions of your application that are actually distributed. So here you 
massive uh, features column with different features. So one with Android or Tado at the touch screen. It's the one for uh, tablets and phones. And the one with Android.software don't lean back. And also Android.hardware.screen.landscape because Android TV doesn't support uh, portrait mode. If you want to generate multiple APKs directly from Gradle um, with the right version code, because you need to have different version codes, that's easy. You can adjust the version code dynamically uh, from Gradle. So here's one slide on it. So here you just prefix uh, your TV APK with two and your application APK with uh, zero. So on Android TV devices, they'll get the one with the IR version code uh, that's compatible with the device. So the right APK. So there are some extra steps for optimization, uh, if you're interested into that. So since I'm working for Intel, I, I have to put this slide. Uh, there are Android devices with Intel chips inside, so since 2012, or even before with Google TV, 2011, but I say it wasn't really Android. And we've got many, including the Nexus player. So even if you have um, binaries inside your applications that are, have been compiled only for ARM, that can happen, they will still run on all these devices because we've got a compatibility layer that does um, translation at run during runtime. So it's quite magic, uh, but if you don't want to rely on magic, which as developer is advised, you can uh, compi recompile your library for all the uh, architectures supported by Android. When you do that, by default, all this native part goes into libs inside your project and lib inside the APK under a subfolder named against all the architectures. So it potentially it may um, grow make the size of your APK grow a bit, uh, but that's not a big issue because you can also split this APK. So once again, just one slight solution with Gradle. So you can split your APK into um, architecture-specific versions adjust the version code dynamically, and upload all these versions to the Play Store. That's the boring part, and uploading all this stuff. Waiting for a better API to, to handle that. So, yeah, I haven't mentioned it first, but the app submission uh, started only last November for Android TV. Uh, so that's not that, uh, I mean, that's, not that long time ago, and there are still room for many applications on Android TV. So that's a good opportunity because you can have a lot more visibility for your application by publishing it on Android TV than just publishing to the store for phones and tablets where that is quite crowded. Uh, adding Android TV support isn't uh, that much work. I mean, it depends a bit on your application, but some tuning, half a day, and, and you can publish it and it should work. It's not necessarily mandatory to have a separate APK. If you can afford doing everything from the same APK, that's, uh, that's a possibility. And also when you target devices like the Nexus player, uh, it's always better if you also provide x86 binaries, if you've got architecture-specific binaries, of course. Thank you.